afternoon, KCG. Good afternoon, Chennai. When I came here earlier today, I felt an enormous privilege to be able to speak to hundreds of dedicated and brilliant Indian young students at one of the most prestigious and fa fabulous universities in India in a very beautiful surrounding, nice buildings at the, at the lake and with a slogan which I really do admire. Can anyone put it more profoundly? Make every man a success and no man a failure. And of course that also means make no woman, sorry, make every woman a success and no woman a failure. That is a fantastic calling for a school. But it's indeed a fantastic calling for each one of us and for you to take through the rest of your lives. Because if you try to do everything for ourselves, well, we will fail all the others, but at the end we will fail ourselves. If you try, if you try to make your siblings, your parents, your community, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India, indeed the world, if you try to make others a success, you will also succeed in your own life. Because this is good, this is the good, the moral way to behave. But it's also the way will make you many, many friends and very few enemies. And that's very, very useful in life. The Chancellor spoke about having a model. If you want a model, I will suggest that there is one model above all. He is an Indian that was a young or maybe middle-aged man who came to back to India from South Africa 100 years ago. He spent most of his life abroad, but he came back to India with one great calling. That was to make India independent and get rid of colonialism once and for all. Now we take this for granted. When Gandhi came to India, uh, no one thought he could succeed. The Brits were sure the colonial power will remain for 100 more years. Most Indians believed he could never succeed. Foreign analysts, if they wrote the newspaper, said this can never happen. And for sure it can never happen with the methods of Mahatma Gandhi. Non-violence, respect even for your opponent, and the mobilization of the Indian people behind this struggle. And remind yourself, at that time the British colonial power was the biggest empire humanity had ever seen. The sun never sets in the British Empire, it was said, because there was always some place in the world which was British and where the sun was shining. It was much more powerful than the United States or China is today. Still, Mahatma Gandhi took up this struggle. He fought with nonviolence, he mobilized people, and he used his own body, his own character as the embodiment of the struggle. And he won within 30 years. That's an enormously short period from the perspective of, of uh, history. A fantastic success. So I encourage you all to take pride in this man. He's one of the greatest human beings who has ever walked the planet Earth. He's also the embodiment of the Indian civilization. And you are part of that civilization. And it goes thousands of years back before Mahatma Gandhi. This is the place where Hinduism originated, where Buddhism originated, where Jainism originated, where Sikhism originated. And indeed, it's the place where Christians came 1,000 years before they came to my nation, Norway. We have been, there have been Christians in India double the time there have been Christians in Norway. So this is the one of the most, with the Chinese and a couple of other civilizations, the most splendid civilization on planet Earth. You are part of it and you take, can take pride of it. And you should know that before colonial times, India was 25% of the world economy. After colonial times, it was 2% of the global economy. But now India is coming back. 
rapidly increasing. The Indian economy will be many, many times the British economy in the years to come. And of course, India will make fantastic, enormous achievements for itself, but indeed for global humanity. And I envy you to be part of this, to be making it. You have the enormous opportunity to be part of the rise of India uh, back to the glorious days where India was one of the lead nations in the world. It's already there, but India can be even a lot greater than it is now, and you will make it so. So people will ask, what is the calling of our generation, similar to taking, upon, uh, taking on the British Empire? I will claim the most important issue for our generation, for you, that is to create an ecological civilization. We need to keep peace on planet Earth. We need to bring every Indian and every human being out of extreme poverty. But we need to do this within the boundaries of nature. We need to create an ecological civilization. India not only have a splendid culture, and indeed they have a splendid culture also as, as Tamils. I mean, not all of you are Tamils, but I guess most are Tamils. Tamil Nadu has some of the most fantastic temples in the world. Tamil language is one of the oldest in the world. So India has a splendid culture. But India also has a splendid nature. It's the home of the tigers, home of certain uh, strange uh, uh, sorts of elephants. The, the beauty of the Tamil, Tamil Nadu paddy fields or the uh, mountains of the Himalayas, the backwaters of Kerala, the deserts of Rajasthan, it's indeed one of the most beautiful and fantastic places on planet Earth. And we need to keep it so, and we need to improve that environment. No Indian child in the future deserves to grow up in a heavily polluted city. Every Indian in the future deserves to ling, uh, live along a, a river like the Ganga or all the great rivers of India, which is not polluted by defecation or by plastic or by industrial agriculture pollution. The Indian rivers can be clean as some rivers are in other parts of the world, and it's an enormous hard work to be done, but it can be done, and I'm sure you will do it. And the species of India, which have been very close to extinction like tigers, are now gradually coming back. India has doubled its tiger population in the last couple of decades. That's a very, very important achievement because tigers is a very, very difficult animal uh, to protect because it may attack human beings. So our calling is clear. Let's create an ecological civilization. Let's get rid of pollution. Let's stop climate change. And let's protect this very, very vulnerable planet, which we share with you, Indian shares, with Europeans, Africans, Americans, Chinese, and every other uh, civilization on the planet. The good news is that we are set to do this. I'm fundamentally optimist. A lot of hard work has to be done, but we are on the right path. Yesterday, the president of China, Mr. Xi Jinping, promised that China will produce a fund of 1.5 billion American dollars for protection of ecosystems in the poor parts of the world. Three weeks back, he, pro he promised that China will now stop all coal investments overseas. That means there will hardly be any money or any company to do coal production in most parts of the world because Japan and South Korea and others have made the same promise. And much more importantly, it will mean China will put its full industrial weight behind solar and wind and green hydrogen and electric mobility and all those fantastic technologies which are already available. But then we want to the United States of America. President Biden has proposed 3,000 billion American dollars for green uh, progress in the United States moving into renewables and turning around the car industry in the United States, which is a huge industry, from fossil fuel cars into electrical vehicles. In Europe, the European Union has made the green taxonomy for Europe, the Green New Deal for Europe, and that's a consistent program to turn Europe in a green direction. And indeed, here in India, Prime Minister Modi, a few weeks back, launched with some of the biggest industrialists in India, a green hydrogen pledge for India. Hydrogen will probably be the most important fuel for heavy vehicles, for ferries and ships, maybe for aviation, 
for industrial processes in the future. And you, those of you who are technical students may contribute to that, uh, that, that uh, change. And those who are studying uh, other subjects may contribute to the politics or the so social aspects of that, that change. And in that meeting, Mr. Ambani, a great Indian industrialist, promised 10 billion American dollars for that purpose. The week after, Mr. Adani from Gujarat promised 20 billion dollars. These are huge amounts. And if you have the combined power of the state and the prime minister and the industrial tycoons of India, this will make a huge shift. And indeed, China, China is now the number one solar nation in the world, but India is the number two. And you are rapidly searching ahead. Solar power in India is now the cheapest power that has ever existed on planet Earth. Cheaper than any other place in the world. Much cheaper than oil or gas or coal. So it's a win-win if you shift. It's good for the economy, good for jobs, good for health, and good for the environment at the same time. And that's, of course, why Prime Minister Modi has launched the International Solar Alliance and has spearheaded the change from coal into solar in India. And now India has the first all-solar airport in the world, in Kochi, Kerala. First all-solar uh, rail station in the world, in Assam. And the new Delhi Metro will very soon go solar. And two days back, I was in Mumbai, launching with the Minister of Environment of the great state of Maharashtra, a fantastic program which will turn the entire fleet of buses in Mumbai into electric in the next few years, and the electricity will come from solar power in Mumbai. Uh, and then you have a real win, 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 jobs, health, and Mother Earth by the same policies. So I will claim this is the great calling for you, for your generation, and for India in the 21st century. Let's together make an ecological civilization. Let me then, towards the end, give you some more private advice. I may not have followed all this myself, for sure not. But still, since you are now men, many of you, some of you will continue education, some will go, go out to jobs, I have three pieces of advice for, advice for you. Number one, always be kind. That's what's in the slogan of the school here. Uh, if you make all men or women a success, and no men and women are failure, if you contribute to that, you do it by being kind to other human beings. Jesus Christ put it in his way, he said, you should always do to others what you want them to do to you. And I tell you, this is both the highest moral, but it's also the smartest way of behave. Because if you're kind to others, you will get kindness back. If you're rude to others, you will get rudeness back. And the person you treat badly today may very well be your boss tomorrow. The person who seems to be very low at the ladder today may one day be able to come back and harm you if you haven't treated him or she well. So it's the greatest moral, but it's also the smartest behavior. Let's be kind to each other. And India, Tamil Nadu, the world, your family, everything will be a better place and you will thrive. Second advice, always work hard. There are no shortcuts. There is no, some people believe that you can kind of jump just by luck or by talent or by being very smart, you can jump into success. There is no, no such way. <laughs> you need to work hard. If you don't work hard, you will not succeed. And if you look to the most successful people in politics or business or science, they always say, it was not my talent. It was my ability to work hard. If you look to the photo, what most people will say is maybe the greatest genius on planet sometimes, Albert Einstein. You see an old man at an American university close to death. But when this, young, this man succeeded, he was 26 years old. He did write a special theory of, of relativity at a small apartment in the Swiss city of Bern. 
He was very poor. He was living there with his very young uh, uh, wife and his very young child. But he worked tremendously hard for this success. And then he succeeded. And of course, humanity succeeded. So be kind, work hard. And the third uh, advice. Oh, uh, the, um, the third advice is to always be curious. Your education is not stopping today. Learning is a lifelong process. The brightest ma minds of humanity, they always kept learning. Gandhi was curious to the day he, dead, he, was, uh, he died or was shot. He was close to 80 years old. Every single day he tried to learn something new. The same is the case with the, all the most brilliant people, whether it's in politics or in, in science or in business or wherever it is. There is always something new to learn. Then you need to read new books, go into new areas, ask new questions, be curious and always strive for something new. I have a good friend in Norway. He passed away this year. He was a war hero of Norway, had fought the Germans during the Second World War. He was even married to a princess of Norway, but he died at the age of 98. I followed him for the last few years of his, of his life. He was always curious, was traveling between Brazil and Norway at the age of 98, was going to Africa to set up new renewable energy plants in Africa, always looking into learning something new at the age of 98. That's what we all should aim at. Life is not, or education is not stopping at the age of 25 or whatever age you are when you leave university. It's a lifelong process where we can all learn something new. And this, of course, was some of the facets of this fantastic man, Mahatma Gandhi. He always worked hard. He never said, I cannot work. He worked hard. He was always curious, trying to learn something new. And he was always kind. He even was able to be kind to his oppressors, which is a very, very difficult thing to be, to be kind to the people you don't like or really uh, have problems with. So, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, great occasion. I wish all of you a fantastic way forward in life. And I think you are very, very, very lucky because you are living in one of the greatest nations on the planet in, uh, in India at a time where India is really rising in the world. And in the state Tamil Nadu, which is one of the richest and most prosperous and most developed in India. So, you have every opportunity to contribute to India and to a better world, and please get it done. Thank you so much. Biggest